We're going to talk about the Predator. The Predator. All right. So this is the first time. Oh, Aaron. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Aaron. And Alan. I seen that. I should introduce you. I didn't what? introduce you the last time we did a podcast. You introduced me last time. I'm, I'm out of here. Oh, I'm going to do this again. This is terrible. I'm the worst. <laughs> Uh, so Aaron from the fire resistant podcast is joining me again. If you guys haven't followed them, go check them out. They're on YouTube, on Twitch, on Twitter, on MySpace, Friendster. Yes. Um, our ICQ number is one, one, five, five, three, two, eight. I have no idea what an ICQ number is. You don't know what ICQ is. Kenneth does. Kenneth. I refer. Yeah. Are you old Kenneth. enough to remember that Kenneth? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Aaron is back and we are talking about the Predator. This is the yes. f- sorry. one of the greatest action movies of all time. This is the first time I've ever seen the Predator from beginning to end. This awesome. and Alien, both movies I've seen tons of clips of, like when they're on TBS or mm-hmm. just, you know, you're flipping through. I'll catch like 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. Never sat there and watched it from beginning to end. Finally did, and I realized you don't need to. You don't need to watch it from beginning to end. No, no, I'm saying it's good, but you can you can jump into this movie at any point and you get the whole movie from beginning to end. Right, right. There's not like there's not like (laughs) layers or backstory or anything important. Well, I think you do. If if you've never seen this movie before, I think you do have to watch it from beginning to end. Just because there is important scenes in the movie, like when Arnold and uh, Carl Weathers see each other for the first time, and they do that <laughs> close-up, like hand slap, that's become a meme for so long. Yeah, uh, I think so. Snow Katrina, uh, we, I think we have the same stepfather, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's like Dylan, you son of a, <laughs> and then and then like the hand clap, boom. We should have that. You should make that like the, uh, like the the art of this. Yeah, podcast. well, that, I was so excited when that scene was coming up. I, my wife watched it with me. I was like, "Look, look, it's gonna be the meme. It's gonna be the meme." And she's like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> and then they did it, and she just started cracking up, laughing. Yeah. Snow I wonder why she said it so much alike. I don't know. Probably because uh, oh, you know, you know why? It's either a you look way old, or I look way young. Yeah. I right, thanks, Katrina. I know I look young. I like that. <laughs> I feel Katrina's old, so I wouldn't be shocked if I look way old. <laughs> but uh, so tell me, what what was your overall thoughts on the movie? It's it's hilarious in the way every '80s movie is, where right? It's just so over the top and so ridiculous, and nothing makes sense. And they. And we got to follow, but I have no idea. I assume it was Snow Katrina. Yeah, there it is. It didn't uh, pop up for some reason. Uh, thank you for that follow. But uh, it's crazy in every way you want an 80s movie to be crazy. The uh, yeah. the costume looks terrible. Um, like, he's supposed to be the ultimate hunter, and he can't <laughs> use his fingers. Like, the scene where he's he's healing himself, he's, like, just tapping on everything, trying to grab stuff. And it just looks so, so unable to... Uh, to do anything correctly like there's no finesse in that costume his, he can't even close his fingers because the gloves are so thick I don't, I don't even know if there's finesse in the new in the new predators or they maybe they didn't even attempt to have them try to use their fingers at all other than just to like close fist punch people yeah i you, you definitely don't need to oh, what all do right I do? i'm screwing everything well, one of the th- uh, one of the things that uh, I thought was funny that for some reason I didn't have any memory of mm-hmm. uh, was the end credits. It was very 80s where uh, instead of just rolling the credits, you have the actual video yeah. of each actor laughing. Each yeah. actor laughing. like Each actor that was, that was horrifically maimed and destroyed. <laughs> now you see them like laughing going, oh, here I am. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was so out of place, too. <laughs> Like, like the only one, like the only one that didn't laugh, if I remember correctly, I think it was Arnold, and his was just like a, 
like he didn't look at the camera he did like a turnaround like they took it they took a small quick clip from the movie and stuck it in there instead of actually having him stare at the camera and yeah. smile yeah well Ar- arnold looked really skinny at the beginning of this movie to me like i was kind of surprised arnold arnold schwarzenegger oh. like he looked like he sucked down a lot to i don't know maybe not to be so blown up on top of everyone else um which would be weird because i feel like that right. was always his goal but i don't know if they like asked him to get smaller but he seemed way smaller than most of his other roles i don't know if he got that vibe or not uh could it have been that carl weathers was so big that he actually was bigger than arnold so arnold looked smaller maybe but like even just it sitting in the plane by himself i like didn't recognize that as arnold schwarzenegger at first hmm. that's weird yeah but it eh, doesn't matter Let's uh let's talk yeah. about the deaths. This we'll do the same okay. way we did with uh Jigsaw. We'll go through death by death. Cool. So we start out and they come to the jungle, they're looking for to save a group of Americans, right? Arnold Schwarzenegger Correct. has a special team who infiltrate into areas and rescue people. He's supposed to be the best at it, but he doesn't like being used as an assassin or like a hit squad. He's he's against that. Uh his morals will not let him do that. Um, but they go in, they get tricked and Creed or Carl Weathers is Dylan Dylan is <laughs> I, what is his, so they're friends. They, they, they did military stuff together at some point in the, yeah. in the past. Uh, yeah. well, what is his job now? Dylan? Yeah. To trick Arnold into killing an entire outpost. But no, what does he do? Hill? But what does he do? Um, it seems like him and uh, and what a couple of the guys are just mercenaries for hire now. Yeah, because that's what I, I was. I was a little confused by why he was there. Like he seemed like he was in charge, but not in charge. And he yeah. seemed like it was a weird layer don't, of. Don't try to make sense to this movie, bro. I can't help it. I gotta understand it. That's the only way I can. <laughs> this is 1980. I mean, you're talking about an era where uh, the Terminator made itself like the original timeline. That when the Terminator didn't come through in the first place, it's we, the Terminator still happened. And then in Terminator Two, it used the piece of it of its own self to make itself. Yeah, the Terminator. You can't even you can't even start talking <laughs> about the Terminator. That's the worst so, thing. Hey, thanks, Risen. Our weather's was Risen just What's followed. Up? It's a clip. As a fellow movie buff, I went in on this. We're talking about The Predator, 1987. I seen that watched The Predator for the first one for the very first time. For the very first time, but it also felt like the hundredth time. <laughs> well, because <laughs> it's a similar story. Yeah. Then, then, uh, just you know, this. Whenever I was watching it again, I couldn't help but to compare it to that movie. Uh, have you ever seen The Gray with uh, Liam Neeson? With the wolves. Yeah. Yeah. It was literally just like that. One, just the wolves were taking one guy out at a time. The predator was taking one guy out at a time. I was not Kenneth. Then. I was a year early, or a yeah. year later. But, so let's see. the The first death was the was the guy with glasses. Well, I wanted to talk about when when they stumble upon the first crew, uh, Hopkins. Okay, yeah. The Hop- first, what's the first, the first skinned people? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I laughed so hard when that popped oh, out. Yeah. It was just so, like, it's just, it sets the tone of, like, this movie is going to be crazy. Because you see the Predator, he starts taking out the the skulls as trophies, mm-hmm. which I don't know if that was, like, a commentary on hunting or if it was just a weird character trait that they wanted to give him. But I didn't quite understand, like, what the purpose of that was. Do you have any thoughts of why he wanted to collect the skulls? I, I don't think it was a commentary. I don't know if they did commentaries on things back then. This movie was like no. This this movie had no brains to it. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. You're, don't don't think about what, what Dylan was doing. Don't think yeah. about what Dutch was doing. Just like just know they're going to save these people and they're going to run into an alien. <laughs> Bad luck. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we're talking about the Predator Risen. Uh, the the original predator. Um, so he, he, but that. So my question was, I don't think he took the skulls out of those original 
skinned people? Uh, I'm not sure. That's actually, it's funny that you bring that up because uh, whenever I, you know, I watched it again today and at the end of the movie, uh, when Arnold is painting himself with mud, yeah. it actually showed the predator like open like this little satchel, and he had skulls in there. So I'm yeah. not, I'm not sure if he went back and grabbed the skulls from the people that he killed uh, earlier on in the movie. Yeah. I'm not real sure. They weren't really clear on where those skulls came from. Yeah, because he rips. They show one scene where he rips the spine and the skull out of the body after he right. takes it up into the tree. But anyway, so they they sum upon that, and everyone's freaking out. They find the girl, or do they find this the skin people before or after they do the assault? Uh, before, before. So they think it's the the gorillas who yes. did it, and so they go yeah. in and Arnold, being the strongest person in history of the world times two, lifts <laughs> that whole car and sets it free, and it just runs into the building, blows everything up, and they just kill everyone in that little village. Yes. And they find out that all the U.S. soldiers are dead. And there's no one left. And that this was actually a trick on Dylan on from Carl Weathers to get them right. in to get information, papers. I don't think they, yeah. they never said what it was. They're just like, oh, these papers are what we want. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger got really mad. It's we like, got to get back to the job. <laughs> <laughs> it's got me a lot of that, okay. How did how did we know the predator didn't go back for the skulls though? We yeah, that's what I was saying. It, it didn't look like they were taken out at that point, but he probably went back and got them. Yeah, well, with each character that he killed, okay, or the, I don't think they, they they didn't carry the body. They left the body in the uh, in the jungle, so he could have gone past the only one that he skull he wouldn't have taken is the um, is a black dude that he shot through the head with the with his cannon. Yeah. The uh, and so now at this point, after the assault on the little gorilla village, we start right. to see the predator, you know, watching them from afar with the uh, infrared, and it, it made me wonder. I wonder what they would have done if the predator was made for the first time now, instead of using an infrared to show it, because that was like mm-hmm. so distracting to me. I, I hated every time they cut to the infrared. Because you couldn't see anything of what was going on. You could see the red people, but you couldn't tell what they were doing. You couldn't see, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't, visually it was not impressive. And that was a lot because the technology just wasn't ready for something right. of that, you know. That, that highly evolved alien that has a spaceship that that came to Earth couldn't see but blurry things. Yeah. And was that, was that because of the, the helmet? Or was that the only way he saw? Uh, when he took the helmet off at the end, he lost the infrared, mm-hmm. uh, but he his vision was like still red, but it wasn't it wasn't heat based. It was just I guess you couldn't see very well. Yeah. Okay. Because that the infrared seems like a bad choice. Like a not it seems normal vision seems more effective than infrared all the time yeah like infrared seems useful as a tool but you wouldn't want that 100 percent of the time true like arnold seemed right. like he had the leg up on him having normal right. vision right. especially I, I, at the I, end. again you're, you're trying to put logic to a movie that where you're supposed to just you know why uh, watch it <laughs> so my review of this movie is boom, boom, bang, bang, dead, dead, fun, fun. <laughs> no, 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 it's not boom, boom. You got to do the chain gun scene where it's ah. I love that, that scene was- because the, so the guy sees the predator, grabs the minigun, yeah. and starts shooting at the predator. And all five of the other guys, no idea what he's shooting at. <laughs> I know. They just, they're like, all right, let's do this. And they just all start shooting into the woods. Like he could have seen a snake and like panicked right. and just been shooting at nothing. And uh, they're all just like, yeah, let's do this and start blasting the woods up, which I mean, forget th- this jungle. that's the type of band of brothers mentality you got to have. <laughs> it's true. You know, it's funny, uh, <laughs> you know, whenever I was what, like a preteen or teenage, that was always my favorite scene of the movie just because everybody was shooting. Okay. And it was a minigun. Right. So that was like always my favorite scene. So when you go back and you watch the scene, you're like, what in the world? They literally just shot that scene. 
just so everybody could be shooting their guns and just that's it that was literally the moment they probably uh i would i should have looked up the trailer for it just to see if that was like a main portion of the trailer was them just all shooting at once <laughs> yeah it is it's crazy like how many bullets would they have had to carry like i know you don't want to talk about realism in this movie but if this was real no how many bullets do you think they would have had to carry to supply all the gunshots that they did throughout this whole movie like they, they, they um, a lot it would have been crates on crates of bullets yeah. just to <laughs> to go through um well, this- what what's your favorite death who's who dies the best in your opinion <sighs> I would have to say, let me look up his name real quick. Uh, I want to say their names. I just don't want to describe them the way I did earlier. Uh, let's see. <laughs> when you it's, called Jamie Foxx, Marlon Wayans, or Marlon Wayans, Jamie yeah. Foxx. Yeah. That, uh, Bill, Bill Duke, he, Mac died the, he died the best. Yeah. Uh, followed, followed up by, um, by Carl Weathers. Uh, yeah. the, the scene where, uh, Bill Duke or Mac tracks down, the uh, alien and he's or not the alien the predator and he's like and he's like look I, I found him yeah and then you see you see the red light go on his shoulder and you know me being you know I've seen all the predator movies since and it's like you see the red dot and it's just like this dude is so done and he just slowly leans his head right where the three dots are right here on his head and then jam uh, I thought that was the best death is this is this what are you saying I think uh, Cliff just posted his whole... Do you want to read that for me, Aaron? Do you have the chat up? Uh, hey, hey, they ghost in us. Uh, beep. <laughs> 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 you give up our positions one more time. I'll ghost you real quiet. Leave it there. You got that? Oh, that's right. It was... Uh, that was him, Bill Duke, talking to Carl Weathers in the in, like in the middle of the movie. Yeah. When he like tripped over something. He's like, I'm going to kill you if you don't shut up. You're going to get us killed. But <laughs> that guy, he goes crazy. Yeah. And when he sees it, he's like, I see it. I see it over there. And he, I just, it, I don't know. This movie, I don't even know. It's so, it's so absurd. Every, everything, every choice everyone makes. The, just the yeah. way that he runs off into the woods, the way Carl Weathers tracks him down to like, I guess he wanted to bring him back, but he doesn't try. He doesn't try to stop him at all. He's just like, all right, I guess this is what we're doing since we found him. But <laughs> you know, I guess this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna die right here. How and so? How does Carl Weathers die? I can't in my head. I can't pull that. So uh, after uh, Mac takes a, a laser shot to the head, yeah. Uh, I don't know what Carl Weathers uh, is doing. Like he's kind of chilling out, and then he sees the thing, and he he starts shooting at the predator. Predator uh, uses the gun or the laser to blow off his arm. Yeah. And then starts running toward Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers. I keep on saying Carl Weathers. I mean, Dylan. He starts running toward Dylan. And then Dylan turns to try and shoot. And then the Predator takes his knife and, like, that's right. Yeah, catches him up and he screams bloody murder. He screams so loud that all the people that are running in the complete opposite direction hear him go, ah. (laughs) Do you? He could have lived. So the trait that a lot of 80s movies has, which I don't actually think is a bad thing but I'm going to present it like it is, is the be- <laughs> the beginning, the first half hour of the movie is so slow. Right. Then uh, the middle of the movie, the second act is very fast. And then the third act is really slow again. Right. So you have the, with this movie, the first act is everything before the predator shows up, right? The assault, pure, then just kind of, yeah, everything's being set up. Then the second act is all the other guys dying, which is just like one after the other, one after the other. Then the third act is Arnold finally fighting on even playing field with the predator. Right. Do you think that's valuable? Do you think it was too slow? Do you like the pacing of this movie? Cause I think, um, go ahead, I sorry. think it's just the story. I think it's just the storytelling of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, you know, you said there's a lot of them that, that carry that same trait. It's, you know, we, we I jokingly br- brought up Terminator last time and, uh, when you look at the first Terminator movie, I mean, you have like your all your setup. You probably have like forty five minutes of setup before the Terminator actually meets up with with Kyle and and uh, 
and Sarah at the um, at the club, you know, yeah. you know, come with me if you want to live scene. It's probably like 30 minutes into the film, maybe 40 minutes into the film, just because there's so much setup. And then there is a fast pace, and then it's, you know, them versus Terminator at the end of the movie. Yeah. And then, so the reason, so it's kind of boring on a rewatch, right? You, if you know what's going to happen, that setup is painful. But yeah, that's when you pop your popcorn. You look at um, Predator, you look at Rocky, you look at Terminator, you look at uh, Total Recall, like Cliff is saying. Um, all these movies from that time have this long legacy that has held that, you know, with sequels and just being beloved. And I think it's because of those setups where you really get to know the characters where now you have movies that just jump you right in the first five minutes. You're already the inciting incident has happened. You're already off and you're in the story. You know what I mean? Like there's no, there's no establishing, there's no foundation building. They just jump into it. And it's more exciting for the one time watch, but it doesn't build anything that you're going to want to revisit where, so it's like this weird, like it's boring, but boring for a purpose that allows you to build on top of it. And so it's, it's an interesting thing to, to look at, to think about like, would the movie be better if it was paced differently or is it being slow for a purpose that they've built upon? Right. I think also, um, like I said, storytelling storytelling has changed. Mm. The audience has changed. Um, and also, uh, when you look at a movie, okay, so who knows how much the latest Predator movie. Let's say the latest Predator movie was like $150 million. Well, now they know that because of the audience, they can't have that much um, slow time in yeah. an action movie. It's not going to do good. And I, can't, I really can't remember the latest Predator movie. I ended up, you know, I told you I turned it off. Yeah. But like, I really don't remember much about what I saw to begin with, other than the scene that made me turn off the movie. It's all I can remember is a <laughs> terrible scene. I was like, you know what? I'm done. Click. Yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen, this is the only one I've seen so far. So I'm excited right. to see the next three. Are you? Like excited to know what they are. This is the best one. This is the best one, bro. Yeah. It's not going to get any better than this one. That's what I hear. Uh, Kenvin says, I didn't watch the one from last year. Uh, Risen says, look at it as informational. Pay attention and look for things you've not noticed before. I love movies and the 80s movies. I love to watch and revisit and learn something new. Like the movie I Come in Peace with Dolph Lundgren. I, I have no idea what that is. Classic sci-fi action flick. Um, but yeah, so the, it, the, first, you know, the first act of Predator really establishes the characters and their relationship and who they are and what their uh, moral level is. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like level as in the balance, not one, two, three. Um, and you get a good sense for who they are, even though it's kind of goofy, even though it's kind of cringy at points. Uh, but then they all die so quick. Like I would have rather seen Arnold fight with people, with his buddies against a predator instead of them all kind of doing it one-on-one -on -one and dying individually. Right. Um, well, the, the, the point of it, though, in the 80s and, and early 90s was it was one hero with his back up against the wall. Like When you look at all of Arnold's uh, movies from that time, it's literally that's, it's that in every movie that he's in. Yeah. Except for, the, except for the Terminator movies, of course, when he's a bad guy. Yeah. But like... For the most part, all of his stuff, he was a one-man wrecking crew. No yeah. one listened to him, and his back was up against the wall, and he did something in the last 20 minutes, 10 minutes of the flick to beat the bad guy. I have not seen I Come in Peace, Risen. Have you seen it, Aaron? I have not. I actually Googled it because uh, um, I'd never heard of it. Yeah. So 90, it came out in 1990. The only Dolph Lundgren movie that I care about is Rocky IV. And then also maybe the Punisher. Punisher. And uh, did you see um, a Universal Soldier with him and Van Damme? Mm -mm, I never saw that. You should see that movie. That's classic. Yeah. Awesome. 80s. Well, that was 90s, but it was, but it was good. It was Van Damme in his heyday along with Dolph Lundgren post Rocky IV, who, which is great. Who is better at being a crazy over-the-top character, Van Damme or Jason Statham? Who would you choose? 
That's a hard question. Because they're kind of the same, right? They're like spiritual successor is uh, Jason yeah, Statham. It, I, I feel like when Jason Statham decides to hang up the reins, like no one's going to be asking, continuously asking for him. Whereas Van Damme kind of, he, he didn't hang up the reins by himself, but like people have always wanted Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, but that was because he kind of went off the rails, right? He got like heavy into drugs and kind of started going crazy. I think uh, that. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it other than <laughs> I, I, I'll step out and I'll say Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah. Just because he's been doing it for longer. Yeah. I, I've got to go with Jason Statham. He's the best. And the, the Crank movies beat any John, uh, John Claude Van Damme movie. I don't know if I can, can argue that at all. I'm looking through all of Van Damme's stuff to see if there's anything where it would be anything like that. And there's not, it's all just kickboxer, Lionheart, uh, double impact, universal soldier, uh, nowhere to run. Yeah. All, all this stuff, hard target street fighter. He played Guile. <laughs> <laughs> street fighter was a mess. That was so bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, so back to predator. Uh, yeah. Everyone dies, right? Everyone, the predator easily takes everyone out. And the thing that I appreciated about this is, like you're saying, Arnold is always, you know, one man wrecking crew, unstoppable. And they even build him up in that. But throughout this movie, he just lucks out. He gets yeah. lucky every step of the way. There's no, it's not really his skill or his survivability. He just, he's focused on the mission. He doesn't get distracted from that. That keeps him alive until everyone else is dead. Then he just keeps getting lucky. He falls into the river uh, and gets covered in mud and the the um, infrared can't pick him up anymore. He figures that out, which I think would be a, a, a big leap, in my opinion, to know right. that, oh, he's clearly using infrared. Like He doesn't say it, but he's like, oh, he can't see me because I'm covered in mud. But I would think, oh, all that electricity that was shocking him after he came out of the water is probably what distracted him from being able to see you. Like that would be my first instinct is, Oh, the yeah. water screwed him up. Not the infrared. He was, he whispered, he went, you see infrared. <laughs> I got to put mud on my body. But then, uh, he goes and sets up his home alone traps throughout the woods, sure. which I w more of that would have been awesome. Just a whole movie of home alone traps in the woods would have been fun. Home Alone 5, The Predator. <laughs> um, but so they go kind of mano a mano or mano y alieno. And yes. uh, it's a pretty fair fight. Like for the most part, all his weapons get destroyed. The Predator's weapons. He's chasing them. He crawls through where the trap is. Um, I seen that. Sorry. It's Twitch against streaming movies. Do you know? Yes. You cannot do that. Uh, they have to be royalty free movies if you want to stream on Twitch. Um, he crawls through the trap. Predator is following him. Then he notices it because he's like, come and get me. Come and get me. Kill me. Kill, kill me. Kill me. Now. <laughs> now. He's like, huh, this is a weird turn of events. And so he looks and he notices the trap, walks around it. But then the, the counterweight. He walks right under which, so Arnold sets it off. The counterweight comes and crushes a predator and kills him. The now, now, before all that takes place, we have not discussed a iconic line from the movie that neither one of us can really um, uh, say. Yeah. But, you know, it wasn't very nice. But Arnold looked at the predator and said, you are one ugly blank and blank. <laughs> and that is an iconic line from movie cinematic history. That thing has been parodied a lot. And it's, you know, like I said, it's pretty iconic just because, you know. So when you saw, okay, I know that you probably saw the predator's face prior to this movie. Yeah, I have. Just because predator has breached pop culture. But I mean. Looking at the 80s, and if you looked at maybe like a high definition redo or whatever, like what were your thoughts doing like the makeup? Did you did you think that it looked good? The face makeup looks fantastic. Yeah. The the whole aesthetic is really good. Like, have you seen the what they filmed against? 
the no. what it was terrible it looks like this little chicken alien in a red suit and that's what they had to act against for most of the movie and it was kind of a joke movie when they made it it wasn't really intended to be the serious action film um mm -hmm. but then they're like we got to change this up and the guy who did it came up with this costume and i think it looks great i don't think it was very practical they should have kept all the insert shots out of the movie because that kind of gave away like oh this is just a guy in a rubber suit but when, right. they, when he takes a mask off yeah no that looks really good and that's that's the beauty of practical effects that's like i would much rather see stuff like that than any cgi type of alien you know like it's just right. you think of uh men in black all those aliens they're just kind of they it's like oh yeah that's cool that's a cool idea that's a cool design but it's nothing like the predator's face yeah i remember being legitimately scared when I saw that movie when I was younger, just because, you know, again, I was preteens, you know, so stuff was still real, kind of. And I'm thinking, I was like, holy crap, how did, like, how do they do that? Because, you know, you can't think of like, you know, robotics and, and probably maybe like a pulley system within the, yeah. the mask to make it, to make it do that. Yeah. So uh, but uh, Cliff said something. Yeah, he says, did we know that the pilot of the chopper at the end of the movie is the guy who acted as a predator, so the guy in the suit? Did not oh. know that. I don't really remember who the guy in the chopper is either. That's kind of my... <laughs> yeah, must have, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, no, they, I like the the predator is so iconic now because mm -hmm. of that design. Like he was... Like his weapons right. were scary or like effective, but like his his presence was what really sold it and him being you know a foot and a half taller than yes. uh arnold schwarzenegger is another thing because arnold is always built up as this huge larger than life no one can stop him he's the, you know he's the terminator and then you have the predators like nah sorry <laughs> and just picks him up by his throat you know it's like man this this thing is dangerous well that was one of the things that i liked about the movie was uh, you know, rewatching it, just looking for like little extra things that maybe they, they did or whatever. But when he decides, when the predator decides, I'm going to fight this guy hand to hand, yeah. right? He takes his mask off. And then like he, there was never a point where Arnold was in control after that. Like the yeah. dude or the alien beat the or predator beat the living crap out of Arnold. There was never a point. He elbowed him, nothing. He punched him, nothing. The, the dude just beat the crap out of him. The so Kenvin said that the actor died in 1991 at age 35. I assume the predator, the guy who did the predator. But um, yeah, so do but you, I think that made him more. I think that made him more scary. So like you have this this predator who's beating the crap out of like you said Arnold, who's always been been larger than life, and then he just. He just beats him. He's going to beat him to death. There's yeah. The only way that Arnold's going to win this fight is if he outsmarts him. Yeah. Do you think that the death of the Predator was fitting for the Predator's character with the, the tree log just kind of falling on him and crushing him? Yeah, it's like the, I mean, what else, how, what other way could, um, could Arnold have taken him out? Yeah. Wait, wouldn't you want no, to see no, him? Because no, no, no. So it's kind of an instant kill, right? Like it's a, I know he doesn't die instantly, but it like completely incont incapacitates him. Would you have rather seen Arnold do a couple different things to take him out little by little, by you know, to the point where he could have taken him on hand to hand? No, no, no that would have taken away from the predator completely. No, I mean he literally there was nothing left for Arnold to do but die. No, uh, this that was his last move, and if it didn't work out, he was dead. There's nothing he could have done. Well, how do you rank? So we talked about the ranking system and yeah. negative five to five, right? So negative five being mm -hmm. the worst movie, positive five being the best. Where would you rank this? I would say probably positive three. Yeah. I think I'm going to go really positive two uh, okay. to one be between there. Like it's not done super great, but it's also in the eighties. So I, I judge right. it. I, I try not to judge movies based on when they were made for how I like them because they that's not how I watch them right like I I enjoy it now in the context that I'm in not so much the context that it was made in so I try to 
I, I keep in mind, I don't, I'm not like, oh, I can't believe that you, you had bad cameras and bad effects. You know, it's not like that, but it's like, I'm in my context. I'm not going to judge it in theirs. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I give it a one to a two. It's, it's good, but it's not like, there, there's a lot of things that could have, could be better about it, but it's still a lot of fun. Right. I would, I mean, and keep in mind what I told you, it doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> so predator, predator two, aliens versus predator, predators, and the predator, or whatever yeah. it was called last year, it does not get any better than this Arnold movie. Yeah, which because it doesn't seem like any of the storytellers got the purpose of the predator at all. Yeah, which we are. I think I can say this: we're doing Predator two next week, right? Yeah, yeah. And so we'll we'll continue our our trip through the Predator movies. Me and Taylor are doing Alien on the other side of the world. And, and hopefully, hopefully, if we can line it all up, we're going to do Alien versus Predator in a three way. Oh, I don't want to watch it again. <laughs> Neither one of them <laughs> do I want to watch it. It's going to be so much fun. But thank you guys yeah. for listening. Uh, we can hang out on Twitch for a little bit more and respond to some of these comments. But I think this will be the end of the podcast. Go check out Fire Resistant Podcast, and we'll be back next week. <laughs>